Good morning. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks so much for doing this. Dude, we, we have been together for so long, from Crystal Time to One True King, Beasts and Beauty, Good and Evil. It, it, it's always, always a gift to share a conversation with you. Thank you so much. The, the power of writing is going into moving pictures. And, that, and I, we must have talked about that a billion times. But to see it physically happening now is like, this is amazing. What is it like on your side of the writing instrument? I mean, I think for me to have something turn into a movie, the first and foremost means that more people are going to pick up the book, right? So that, as an author, I think that's the number one thing I look for is is what what's another way to get readers uh, into the world? And especially in this day and age when everyone's so distracted and there's so many million things going on, a movie seems like a golden ticket uh, to getting people familiar enough with the world where picking up the book doesn't seem so daunting, especially for you know more younger readers. Uh, so I think the movie was that kind of gateway, and I felt so lucky because the series has been out in 10 years, but uh, now it's selling better than ever because of that movie. Well, see, I love it when adults find it, too, because it also leads them back to your books. Because to me, you know, the term a YA author is like, OK, well, we, no, I'm reaching adults, too. So, I mean, that's what I love about the writing that you have. It's not so YA. It's for everyone. 100%. And I think that goes back to the original subject matter, because... If you look at the original fairy tales that the Grimm's brothers wrote, those were for everybody. You know, whether you were a kid or a grand, you know, grandfather, they all shared the same stories. And I think um, I try to write with layers so that, you know, if you're a young reader, you get one version of the story. But if you're older, you're going to get all the deeper symbolism and things like that. I mean, it's what I love about Harry Potter also, is that it worked for any age. And so that was always kind of a guiding light for me is could I write a book that worked um, for adults as much as younger readers. And I think, you know, over the years now when I do events and things like that, it's half adults, half, half kids, you know. Sometimes the parents have read it before the kids have. Yeah. So I think that's what's made it. Um, and it's why the movie, I think, worked for all ages and was really sort of an all-family movie. The book we're talking about is Fall of the, Sco- Fall of the School for Good and Evil. All schoolmasters have got to face a test. I like what your test is here because it messes with the imagination because we all go through this test. It's loyalty, but is it corrupt? We know what loyalty is, and we've all broken loyalty. Yeah, I think for me, I love the idea of you having two identical twins running the school, one that had sort of a pure good soul and one that had pure evil soul. And these two brothers can only really run the school if there's balance between them. Otherwise, they lose their immortality, they lose their powers. And so the idea that you have two brothers who really despise each other but need each other in order to to run this school, it sort of reminded me a lot of what happens in sibling relationships sometimes where you can't live with your sibling, but you can't live without them. Sometimes you want them gone. Sometimes you need them. There's kind of this constant back and forth and tension and balance between uh, siblings and a family. So to me, the the book, first and foremost, is about family. Uh, and all the fantasy and magic is there to support that, support that story. So many times, you know, I mean, as readers, we like to skip ahead. You don't want to skip ahead with your books because what you do is that everything has, has a hook to it like a song. And, and that's what's interesting about the way that you put these paragraphs together, dude. I mean, I try to make it so that it feels like it, you could only read it in one sitting, that you can't move, that it just moves so quickly that um, you're sort of swept along with it, you know? And I think... For me, you have to have that level of pace and that many twists and turns and things like that to keep up with all the other options for screen entertainment, right? Because kids can pick up TikTok, adults can pick up TikTok and just start scrolling and seeing fun videos. But it's like that social battle. Um, so with a book, you can go deeper, but you have to have the same level of entertainment. So it's always, always a tough challenge. When I'm writing these days, I've never felt under more... Pressure is the wrong word, but more challenge to make sure that it's entertaining enough to pull them along. So now, how do you know in your heart when you're behind that, that computer when it's going to be a shocking conclusion? And does it come at you all at once, or do you have to build that conclusion? I think sometimes you don't even know what the conclusion's going to be. You, you're, you're sort of swept along also. You know, sometimes you're surprised by it as much as the reaper's going to be, and I think that's when you know you have something really amazing because um, there's no telegraphing it. It happens on its own. Um, But other times you have a great ending in mind and you just have to sort of build towards it and have trust that um, you're not going to give it away while you're writing it. 
although this is the the conclusion of 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 the the, the storyline, listeners need to understand that that doesn't mean that you're going away because you're all about sharing adventures with your readers. You're not going silent on us. No, I mean I think this is the end of this world. You know, this kind of fairy tale era for mm-hmm. me. I've done I've done ten. Ten books? Is that right? Nine, mm. Yeah, nine books and then a, a handbook. So ten books total in this fairy tale world um, over the course of almost eleven years. So uh, I'm going to move on to something completely different, and I'll take my time making sure I get it right. But I would like to have a complete reinvention into a different world. What is that going to be like for you to go through those changes? Because I mean, I mean, that's like that's like Madonna reimagining herself, and but she continues to do it, and and you've got to take newer steps, and you've got to create newer habits. I think it's that you have to have enough of a, a confidence in your own voice to know that it's okay to just go in a different direction and explore a different part of yourself. Um, you have to be open to it feeling a little awkward at first, um, but I think it's. It's about do you have other stories to tell, other skins to inhabit, and and not being afraid of what that's going to mean for your audience. Mm-hmm. You know, your audience um, changes too, so you have to you have to give them a chance to explore different parts of the world and of yourself and of your writing with them. Is it still fun to write? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, I I think I'll never get. Tired. Now, if I go more than a couple of days without it, I start to feel off. So oh, I'm so I think with it's you. Part of my path. I, I'm so with you on that because I, I call writing an addiction. It's all part of the the creative addiction that we have, and you've got to feed that beast and allow that inner, uh, you know, that inner, what, what, like a movie screen, come to life on that page. Yeah, and I think also you're constantly inspired by other things you're you're seeing and watching and reading, and I think that just goes back into it. It, it brings out that sort of fire within you to to you know, tell your own stories. That's so important that you say that because, you know, so many writers will tell me, they'll go, look, I, I'm, I'm an avid reader or I'm an avid story viewer. And, and that's, that's where you pull your energy from in order to, you know, like you said, create your own voice. Uh, yeah, I think also it, it reminds you how much power there is out there creatively. When you read something good, it just, um, you know, it's not that it fires up your competitive instincts, but it pushes you to say, you know what? I can do better. Like I can do better than I've already done. There are new levels for me to reach. There's new potential for me to find. So I think that's why artists are always looking for something that, that I'm always looking for something that wows me, you know, (laughs) that when I read, Oh man, this is a different level. How do I get to this level? So so I think it's, it's a lot like sports. I was an athlete growing up in a lot of ways. And I feel like, I always loved playing against someone who's, who is a lot better than me because then I would try to pick apart their game, you know? So um, I think it's the same. Wow. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future. You know that door is always going to be open for you, sir. Thank you so much. I, ho- I hope I'm back soon with something else. Absolutely. Will you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you.